Merch Chopper here with the latest Big Brother Canada, Evic T. Uh, Vivek, before we even get to your eviction, I have to ask you about the big decision, the decision to nominate, uh, and even his name, I had to say a few times, Dennis. I have covered <laughs> reality television for a long time, almost as many years as you are in age, and I have never seen a move that shocked me more. For all the Canadians who must know, why did you nominate him? As much as I love Dennis, as good as a human being is, and I really did want to go to the end with him, it came down to numbers. When I was my HOH, I had every single person in the house come up to me and share their feelings about Dennis. They would mention he's vague, and they don't really fully trust him. And then when I found out that if I didn't win HOH that week, I would have been on the block with Dennis. And next week, that's potentially what's going to happen again. With It's going to be me and Dennis on the block. It tells me right there that this is not a good situation for me and I need numbers in this game to move far. That's why when the Alliance came to me with Kayla, uh, Spicy, and uh, Anthony, even though I had an inkling these guys might be manipulating me, they might be using it against my advantage, at the end of the day, I want them to think that because at least that way they feel like they control me. Hey, it's okay, Vivek, we can control them. And I know I can get numbers on my side. Spicy V and Anthony are running this house right now. There's without a doubt. And the fact that they feel comfortable with me, I can at least get into their numbers on the side. That was my initial goal. The worst part about it was the person that they wanted me to put up and prove my loyalty to them was Dennis. Um, and knowing that I take out Dennis, it also takes me off the block moving forward because now people have the inkling that we're super close together. It also helped my game. I hate to do it to him as much as I love him. I really did have to separate my emotions, but obviously they didn't trust me enough fully because the next week uh, they evicted me still. So if I knew that they really didn't trust me still, I definitely would have taken shots at both of them. Dennis told you that you, that he would go, uh, that you would go home uh, if you nominated him, that he would go home uh, if you did. And then you would go right after. Um, if you could talk to him now, what would you say? You were right. <laughs> but uh, 100%, I, I, I'm I, sorry I couldn't share that full information with you in the game. I had to be vague about it because I didn't want to expose that I'm working with these people. I had to tell them that, hey, the people just don't feel good about it. But there's a reason it was unanimous. The whole house felt this way. It was like that from the get-go. And to get myself away from that position or being associated to it, I had to put you up on the block which hurt, trust me, a lot. It was heartbreaking for me. Todd nominated uh, you after Spicy B used the executive power of veto. He also took the opportunity to take a shot at you by saying that it was for Dennis. What did you think when he said that? Todd is just whatever Bailey wants, Todd will do. The fact that I used that um, chain of revenge on him to evict him out of it, that rubbed him the wrong way. The fact that I'm gunning for Bailey rubs him the wrong way. So I'm not surprised that he went after me. And I know Dennis and Todd had a close relationship and he had to give him advice. But the truth is, it's because I wasn't going to give him his vote that he wanted to stay against Tola. Mm -hmm. And I was going after Bailey. And then I also had his name the week prior. So him choosing me, it is what it is. I'm not mad at it. It's a good, good game. Um, I want to I want to delve into that a little bit more. This relationship with Todd, we saw you attempt to campaign to him, as you just suggested, um, like him and Bailey. Um, but this was, as you just said, uh, right after you chose him to eliminate in that in that rejection uh, chain competition. Did you ever think in a million years uh, he would vote to keep you after that? No, no way. And so then I'm interested into like what the campaign was for. Is it just one of those things where you're just trying to collect the votes? Oh, get them? oh I see what you mean. I see yeah. what you mean now. Sorry. I kind of... So me campaigning to him, I wanted to make sure that, hey, by the way, yes, I'm coming after you. It's damn clear to the entire house that I'm coming after you. Mm -hmm. People know where my target lies. But how about what if I told you that there's a bigger, stronger competitor that's also coming after you that has told me face to face? And that was Tola. That was my main campaign. Tola or me? Who do you want? coming after you at the end of the day and the fact that they still think toll is not coming after them is just shocking to me that guy without a doubt is going after them he just needs a little bit of power and he'll show his hands
you seemed to definitely bond with um, Anthony. I never know whether to call him Anthony or Dougie, so we're going to go with Anthony. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now that you are out of it, uh, is there any part of you at all that regrets not seeing him for the threat that he was? I didn't really understand sort of like doing what he said. Uh, if if you just said that, like, you know, he, it was obvious that he was running the house. It's, it's one of those things where Anthony is really, really good with his words. Um, on a personal level, that guy is like me completely. Like I see a, my future self in Anthony. Um, but on a game level, the guy went to final two, never touched the block in his own season. I saw him from a third, from the, the beginning of the show. Week one, I tried a campaign and he heard about it. And that's what got me in trouble with him. I tried to mend things because I know I want his numbers. I want to make sure that if he feels good with me, he's going to get people to also feel good with me mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And I wanted that. I wanted him to feel comfortable. But obviously in the back of his head, he still had this guy said my name in week one and fully did not trust me. And that's why I feel like um, during that eviction of the executive, he probably rooted for me uh, with Spicy uh, and got me out. Is it is it one of those situations where, you know, like sort of get on his good side, we'll deal with him later? Yeah, it's okay. one of those things where it's like you don't or you want to pick your battle at the right moment right okay because even if i put him on the block right now i still feel the house wouldn't vote. even if i put him up against the biggest pond goose goose and anthony he would still have the votes mm-hmm. to stay because mm-hmm. people love him so much now that i think about it it's like hey if i'm going to be evicted right regardless i have to make the bold move the only way that either anthony or spicy we actually leave the house is to put them both on at the same time which is unlikely to happen. I don't think anyone in the house is going to have the balls to do that. Do you feel like you were just playing the games of other people? And by that, I mean uh, Anthony specifically. Um, I think at moments, yes, I was playing Anthony's game, but it was to prove my loyalty to him until I can get on the better side. It's like one of those situations where if you can't beat him, join him. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to join him. And once I was in there, then I wanted to make a move against him. I was planning my move for Anthony in like the final five, final four, when I'll finally be able to take him out. When I have like more power, it's like only one person is voting that I can actually right. negotiate with. Rather than go early where it's like guaranteed, not right. only is he going to stay in the game, he's going to have the numbers to come after you next week. It just doesn't make sense. I want to uh, quickly touch upon the East Coast Alliance and its disintegration. Uh, just in your opinion was that an actual thing was it just a casual sort of like conversation with don and bailey what was it i didn't want to blow up because initially i knew that it was anthony that shared that information with him uh with victoria but i knew before going into that conversation that dennis had told me that hey uh, todd has been throwing your name under the bus and when victoria came into me and was asking me who did this Mm -hmm. i already know someone who's blowing up my game and it was todd the only thing i'm in with todd was the east coast thing it wasn't really an alliance. It was more like, hey, I got your back. You got mm-hmm. mine. But I had to throw his name out there because she wanted names. And I said, okay, who's closest to Todd? Bailey. And then mm-hmm. there was an occasion where Bailey, when I shared something with her, she would run up to Anthony's room. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, they must be close too. So I threw both their names out there. V used it to her advantage, created a situation that blew up my game. And I just tried to, instead of bursting in complete anger, I tried to manage the situation by putting a smile on my face and, playing along with it. It's like, Hey, I know this is a sticky situation. And the worst part is I couldn't tell them that I know they had my name in the mouth because it then exposed Dennis in my relationship with him. I didn't want that. And now the question that I've been dying to ask, uh, in your introduction video, you mm-hmm. said that your knowledge of the game is high tier and master level. Do you still feel the same way? <laughs> I love this question. Um, in terms of a viewer, yes. In terms of actually playing the game, completely different. As a viewer, you see everything that's going on in the house. When you're actually inside the house and the information that's fed into you and what you see, it changes your opinion day to day. So after experiencing the game, I definitely wouldn't call myself a master class. As a viewer, still yes. I still feel like I, I, would, I know where things would be aligned just by quick little conversations but it's completely different when you're in there. When you're in there with no communication to the outside world, you're on slot for three weeks, and all you can think about is how do I make it another week? You start making decisions that might be wrong. What move are you the most proud of, and what move do you regret the most? I'm really proud of the fact that I got to know each and every single one of the house guests. 
I know at the end of the day, we're all gun, gun, gunning against each other and we're playing a game, but we're all in this together. And I'm so glad I used my HOH to get to know each and every single one of them. The story that Tola shared about is how he immigrated here was absolutely amazing. The stories that even Billy, as much as I didn't like her in the game, the fact that she shared her trauma with me was amazing. I genuinely am so proud that I did that effort to get to know them because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I want to make sure that I got to know the people that also made it like me. Your other question was the worst. Sorry. That's right. The worst um, game move. Looking back at it now, there has to be, it has to be Dennis because if I had known that those guys didn't fully really trust me and were just using me, um, even after I knew that they were manipulating me, they were just using me and they were getting me up the next week. Getting out Dennis was probably the best, the worst move because at that point I would have just gone guns blazing. If we're going to get out, let's get up, but at least take one of them down. Amazing. Vivek, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem.